Today, we look at what's cool, not cool with the Buck Sprint Pro. Yeah, there you have it, folks. Real nice lines on this Buck Sprint Pro. I really like what uh, Buck produced. That's why I threw down my hard-earned money at about $100. I hopped on over to Blade HQ and picked this blade up for us to test out, take a look at, and review. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, I have a love, kind of hate relationship with Buck knives. There are certain Buck knives, particularly like their classic 110, 112, that are just phenomenal. was really impressed with the Buck 119 this year, finally getting my hands on one one for a while ago, but getting out there and actually using it on a regular basis, I was very impressed with what it has to offer. Uh, but then getting kind of frustrated with, uh, say, their Buck Pro, uh, Slim line that they released. You know, their um, budget-friendly versions seem to work really well with fit and finish, but their Pro Series was really kind of all over the place with fit and finish. I went through about three of those mini 112 Slims, and none of them uh, operated and functioned properly. Um, and so I kind of have this, I like certain aspects to them. I love the history of buck knives and, and the classic feel, um, but there sometimes is some hit and miss stuff. So I was kind of apprehensive about purchasing this Sprint Pro. Now this is the uh, higher end version with micarta burlap handle scales and S30V steel. There is a budget friendly version for about $50 that has uh, glass reinforced nylon handles and 420 high carbon. They're both made in the USA. And so that is one of the main reasons why right out of the gate I wanted to not go with the budget-friendly version because I've seen pretty good success with uh, Buck's budget-friendly stuff, but wanted to throw down $100 to see would I be happy, you know, throwing down my $100 for you guys. I get it. You guys especially, you know, you save all year and a lot of you, you know, you're going to buy one, maybe two knives that cost in, around this price point and really make sure that you're getting, you know, what you pay for, getting something that you guys are happy with, that you're going to enjoy, that you're going to be like, yeah, I threw down $100 on this and I'm proud of the knife that I'm carrying. I want to make sure I, I have that concept, that thought in mind for you guys, the viewers. So a couple things on aside from what I've already listed that really connected with me um, is the fact that this is, I believe, if not the first, one of the first ball bearing um, deploying blades that Buck has produced. So there are ball bearing bushings in here that make for a very smooth deployment. It has an internal stop bar, stop pin. Hopefully you guys can see that in there that rides in the track. So it's actually, it's not like stationary. It rides in the track, goes in and locks into place there. Uh, steel liners on the burlap micarta. And I, I'm really uh, liking the burlap look, the feel. And then with those steel liners, just giving that little extra sense of strength that the, the knife needs without sacrificing weight. This guy's gonna come in at 3.2 ounces. That's very lightweight for the size, the, the materials, the technology that they're putting into this. So I was very happy with the weight class that this is coming in. Great blade size. This guy is gonna be three inches even on that blade shape. Just lo look at that. I mean, just really nice and classy. We can get that sucker to zoom in there. Hollow grind. I really like the flare jimping that they've done there. It's not sharp, but really gives it a really cool flare to it. Good little kind of valley right there. So we know, you know that we can get a really good grip on the blade, mild clip. So the aesthetics are really nice. The CPM S30V steel, fantastic steel. Uh, you know, in the 420, we'll talk about value here. We're gonna run in some competitive options a little later on. You know, we'll determine that, but you know, a 420 would have a very similar blade shape and profile and three inches, you know, perfect for EDC. So it's a perfect EDC weight class, EDC size, um, and, and functionality. I was very happy with how the edge performance was. B Buck always does a great job producing sh razor sharp knives. Uh, the grinding was good. You know, didn't really have any issues with that. So very pleased with the blade shape and then the weight that they were going with. And then the smooth deploying ball bearing bushings with that finger flipper. Doing something a little new unique there with that see-through flipper. No jimping on it, but it doesn't need it. It's got really good purchase right there. And you can just zip that thing right open every single time. Didn't flick it quite hard enough. And that'll bring me to the second point, is that out of the box, and this is where, again, I have this kind of uh, with Buck and why I wanted to get the more expensive version because my more expensive version of the Slim uh, 112 was not good on blade centering and was rubbing up against the micarta and stuff. The blade centering was a little off on this. So I played with the pivot. I tightened down the pivot a little bit. That brought it straight in and I've been messing with it for about a week now and literally sitting there just open, close. I'm watching 
a movie, open and close. I'm sitting at the dinner table after the kids go to bed, open and close. While I'm like watching YouTube, listening to the news, you know, whatever. Just keep on doing that to make sure that the pivot is gonna stay there where it's supposed to be. So I haven't seen anything with that. So when I did tighten it down a little bit, the pivot, you know, tightened up a little bit, So, but still super smooth deployment. You don't even really need to flick your wrist and this thing's gonna fly right open. There you go. So real nice on that end. And again, great centering. I'm not seeing it float one way or the other once I've tightened it down with literally hundreds of deployments at this point without it starting to, you know, float back into place or any or, you know, off to one side or anything like that. So not a deal killer, but would have liked to have that perfect right out of the gate uh, and had that pivot tightened down properly. Now, the second part that just really spoke to me was the handle itself. That burlap just looks so nice. And when I saw that it had steel liners, I was like, okay, because I was kind of concerned maybe that was an issue with my old uh, 112 slam that uh, I tried out with the micarta that those didn't have steel liners. But you can just see how nice that is. The contouring is fantastic. The ergonomics on this knife are great. It's gonna be from front to back, it's gonna be 4.375, so great handle length there. Uh, it's about an inch high. Really good thickness there. I can't. I don't remember the spec off the top of my head, but it's not ultra thin, but not too bulky either. But you can just see that the the angles have all been very well machined. I really liked that aspect to it a lot. Major flow through all the way, which is great. Got that little gold spacer back there is kind of what that looks like. And then uh, even some little grooves in there, just really ergonomic, feels really good. Your finger rests right there on that little cut in there with that very light, very stylish jimping. So you feel like you have a lot of control over the knife when you're doing your EDC cutting. Now it comes in the second part that I'm a little eh, is the pocket clip. Now it's a deep ride pocket clip. That's great, really have no issues with that. It's not ambidextrous, and this totally could be an ambidextrous knife with the liner lock we're gonna look at in a minute and the finger flipper. They could have easily engineered with just a slight changing of the handle or something like that, a loop over right or left pocket clip. So lefties, you're out of luck. You can literally check out now, this knife doesn't apply to you. And that's really annoying and I don't like that, particularly when a finger or when a knife has a finger flip, flipper because it's a very ambidextrous, friendly, um, option and this just doesn't have it. The second thing is that the way they designed the pocket clip here is that it has that nice loop over so it'll even fl uh, fit on you know your thicker um, pockets but it has this major drop and then kick up again so that you have this really kind of annoying up and when I grip the knife if I grip it really tight I know that it's there now it doesn't bite into my hand but I just know that it's there and it tends to be something that can snag on other clothing if you know you're rubbing up against you know going th going through something scratch your car door you know it, it's gonna offer that it's gonna it's gonna be like hey this is kind of something that's gonna cause problems and so you could grab it bend it down slightly and I'm sure it would be fine uh, but again it, I just really would like to have seen just a little bit more ergonomic it's not as crazy flare with it dropping and then up so you have this kind of like do do up and it just doesn't fit very well with I believe the knife and then again the non ambidextrous features so that's a little bit of a drawback to me a little bit of annoyance because you know you're cutting out a percentage of the market there immediately with everything else in this knife says that it could be lefty friendly and it's just kind of a goofy large lipped pocket clip that doesn't need to be with all the other nice slim elegant lines that the knife offers so it's not a deal killer for me as a righty but it's just a little bit of a nuisance I'm like eh, man why why did they do that why didn't they just to redesign the pocket clip a little bit. Now to the final piece. Now, as I said earlier, the pivot was loose um, when I got it and the, you know, the blade centering wasn't perfect and the lockup was loosey goosey as well. I mean, it was like wobble side to side and wobble up and down. So right away I was like, oh my gosh, okay, if this pivot, if I, when I tighten this pivot, this doesn't fix it, I'm gonna be really irritated. So I tightened it down, you know, again, it hasn't loosened up at all with the hundreds of deployments that I've done now. Um, and the tight, the lockup definitely tightened up. So there, right now when I do it, there's slight flex side to side, but you get that with a lot of ball bearing pivots. Ball bearing pivots are ultra smooth, but they have a little more play usually than you would find on bronze phosphorus bushings or nylon bushings or something like that. They usually have a little bit of more rock side to side, but it's about average for what you would find on a lot of other like knives that we've looked at from either Wii, Civivi, um, uh, Rake. I'm thinking of other ball bearing, you know, bushing knives that are around this price point. Um, I'm sure there's a couple I'm forgetting just off the top of my head. So the side to side rock is not a big deal. It's There's just a hair side to side now that I've locked down the pivot. But the other thing is the liner lock. Now I'm totally fine with liner locks, not a big deal. This is right about 50% there. 
I'm almost starting to get to the point where it could over travel and get jammed. So that's something I'm going to keep an eye on. I'm, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's, it's not, it's a little too far for what I would prefer. And it's one of the thinner liner locks I own. It's one of the thinnest that I have. Um, so just a little extra thickness would have been nice to see on the liner lock. Um, it would have probably added another 0.2 ounces if they had just made the liners just less than a millimeter, you know, like a micron thicker. And then we would have had a thicker lockup as well. Again, for light duty EDC, which is what I believe this knife is for, it's fine. There's no up and down play, it's solid. But it, when you look at it, you're like, huh, that's like dead center and it's kind of thin. Um, so, you know, it, it, it would have been nice. Just again, it, these aren't deal killers, all these things I'm listening to you, but they're things that I'm like, well, my preference would have been to have it just a little bit thicker. My preference would have been, had it to be more on like the 40% per portion than on the like 50 to almost 60% on the lockup on the back. I'm not really concerned that's gonna go all the way over and jam up, um, but you know, it's something that I'm like, it, it came into my head. And normally when I look at a liner lock, it doesn't come into my head because it's more on like the 40% of the back of the spine. So those are things that again, I just want you to be aware of. So going into the purchase of the knife that I don't think are deal killers, but they are telling me, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're not killing the knife, but they're not making me jump up and down about the knife either. So let's jump to just a few competitive options that I can show you guys. And I also wanna just quickly remind you also about our backcountry.com links, great outdoor supplies that you can find often several brands that Amazon does not carry. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and that always helps us out and continue to do what we do when you guys use those hyperlinks as well as our knock around sunglass hyperlinks that we offer to you guys. Great sunglasses for the whole family. Check those out if you're in the market for that. They make gr great gift items prices as low as like 15, 10, $15 on their uh, clearance areas up to $35 on average for Polarize. And they just have so many options and customizations. They have a custom store. So check those links out below, but let's go ahead and look at some of those competitive options. So as we hit the tabletop here, I just want to run in the first knife that's so similar to this one, the H and K Hadron. Uh, and this is made by Hogue. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Just messing with you. Looking forward to doing this video soon. Um, having a little fun on screen with you guys. Make sure we're all focused in here. No, it's this guy right here. Uh, this is the Tops. What is this? Mini. Yeah, Mini Scandi Folder 4.0. Uh, USA made my car to handles, my car to handles, ball bearing bushings, ball bearing bushings, uh, deep ride loop over pocket clip, N690 uh, steel. So that's an Italian made steel, then shipped over here and made and put together in the US. Uh, steel liners, finger flippers. I mean, very, very similar, right around $100 for this tops as well. So just the main things that I wanted to point out is that one, the flare on the pocket clip here just isn't as crazy as on the buck and getting back to that point there, you know, you can just see there. And again, no ambidextrous feature on the buck, totally ambidextrous for the top. So you can just unscrew that pocket clip, swap it over, you're ready to rock and roll. The other thing as well is that the liners here on the um, tops are just a hair thicker. And this tops I think comes in right around four ounces, maybe even a little bit less, very close in weight and size to the buck. Um, but you can just see there when you look at them, that the, your tops is going to have a thicker frame lock, has a little bit of jimping just to help you grab it a little bit better, um, and that that makes it look a little higher quality, even though you know the liners are liners. But yeah, that little attention detail there um, is something that is noticeable. So um, those are just some things that simple things. If they had just made the liner lock a little bit thicker. Uh, and then made the pocket clip a little bit different design and ambidextrous. I think this would be very awesome. Um, not again that, that those are deal killers, but just food for thought concept. There are other things out there similar to this. Obviously this has a skinny grind, hollow grind, positives and negatives there. Um, other competitive options to this particular model, S30V, Speed Safe Open Assist uh, Kershaw. Uh, this will be righty only as well. It is assisted open. Um, but uh, this guy's gonna run you about $70. So it doesn't have the micarta and um, doesn't have the boss heat treat. We could argue about you know quality with that or whatever, but just wanna give you a competitive option more than anything else there. And uh, just show you again um, that uh, with the lower end version, that's gonna come in at $50. And again, that'll be glass reinforced nylon. Um, with the fact that there is no ambidextrous feature uh, in the 420 high carbon, I mean, there is a lot else out there on the market. This is a Civivi Backlash. 
uh, right here. Great knife. Love this thing. G10 handle scales, not polymer. Um, ambidextrous loop over pocket clip. Again, ball bearing bushings. This is going to be 9CR18 MOV steel. Definitely going to hold an edge longer than 420 high carbon. And again, going to have a thicker liner thicker liner lock right there. So um, it's going to be about $42. So let, Chinese made with a higher quality steel. Yes, it is Chinese made. I get it. Um, but uh, uh, the $50 for the U, the 420 cheaper version of the Sprint, um, there's some steep competition out there that you just need to consider when you are looking at this model. So um, take that in consideration. Many of these knives that I've talked about will be in the description below there and the competitive options for the cheaper version as well. I mean, there's like the 420 version of the Kershaw Link. It's assisted open, but again, ambidextrous, uh, 420 high carbon, USA made, aluminum handle scales. I think that goes for about $40. So um, I, I would say that if you're going to look at one of the two of these, uh, versions. I think the Pro would probably be the more, you're getting more for your money uh, than I believe you are with the budget-friendly version. There's just so much else, both U.S. and Chinese made, that's going to be either the same or even better with options and materials than what the $50 um, Sprint will be. Well, folks, we've got to bring it to a close to give you my final thoughts. As you've seen there, I mean, there's so much on the market that is in this price range that is either competitive or very similar that may miss some aspects, maybe in style and design, because it definitely has a very cool style and design. But some some other blades that we've looked at might not be quite as stylish, but have, you know, better fit and finish or better thicker, you know, lockup or whatever, you know, Chinese versus US. I mean, there's all those things that you need to weigh and keep in consideration. That's what we always do here when I make these videos is I want to give you guys data points, give you my opinion, but then ultimately help you make that wise choice. Is the Sprint, either Pro or the um, uh, regular, going to be something that is of value to you that you're happy and proud of owning and putting in your pocket? Or is it something you're like, yeah, I need to look in a different direction. That's what we always want to do here. And so for me, what I really appreciate is that Buck is trying very hard to get themselves into the 21st century of knife making. Uh, all of their designs that connect with people, and for the most part, and connect with me, are most of their designs that are from like, the mid 20th century, you know, I mean, that, and that's cool because it's retro, but when we look at new designs, new technology, new steels, Buck has, in my opinion, been dragging behind for years. Um, and uh, I, I appreciate the fact that f for most of what this knife offers, they're really trying to get some cool new technologies with the, the ball bearings, you know, good, using good CPM, you know, S30V steel, burlap micarta, you know, good lines that are simple and not weird and crazy and weird, you know, secondary assisted features and all that. So I appreciate all the simplicity that this knife has to offer. As I've said throughout this video, they're just these little things that are a little bit of hangups that don't make me jump up and down about the knife. Is the knife a good knife? Is it, would it be a, a good EDC for the price? Sure. Is it going to be my first choice? I don't know. Um, maybe if I'm a huge Buck fan or I really like my car to burlap or, you know, I'm just looking for that light duty EDC that kind of has an old world feel, but still giving me all these cool new technologies and, you know, nice slim lines. It has a lot of that. So I'm kind of on the fence with this knife, guys. There, there are certain aspects that I love and certain aspects I'm like, eh. So I hope that you have uh, been able to determine for yourself if after this video, you're like, yes, I must have it or yeah, I got to pass. So um, I hope that this video is just giving you those data points, giving you that information. Uh, check us out on Instagram, all the social media. We really appreciate when you guys follow us there. Please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Hit that little sub subscribe icon popping up, the next video icon popping up. or throwing up videos every single week. We invite you to become part of the GT family. Uh, and uh, yeah, what else? Lots of cool stuff happening here at the channel all the time. Uh, we love you guys. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.